One day my son asked me, Dad what happens when we die? This question caught me by surprise, so at first I didn't want to tell him that I really didn't know what happened to a person when they died because that might scare him. Then I thought on the other hand if I told him about the love of God in heaven it would put his mind at ease. What's the problem don't you believe in God? I grew up with a belief in God. But as I grew up the more questions I asked the harder it became to believe. Let's say I just don't believe in a personal God. I do feel there is something there after we die other than a void of darkness. So, what did you tell your son? Despite what I felt was right I told him about God. So do you feel now that it was the right thing to do? You know I'm still not sure. Let me tell you a story. When my son was three he was scared for the thunder and lightning, well most children are. Anyhow in an effort to make things all better I told him the the thunder and lightning was Mario and Luigi up in the clouds and they were bowling. I said the thunder and lightning happened every time the balls hit the pins. It worked very well. He was never scared of the thunder and lightning after that again. You know, it's amazing what a large amount of faith children have in their parents. Anyhow years later when my son was seven, we were driving in the car and as he was looking towards the sky, he turned and looked at me with a puzzled expression on his face. Then he asked me, he said, Dad how do Mario and Yuriji get up in the clouds? I didn't realize how seriously he took what I said, so I told him I made it all up and he seemed somewhat disappointed in me after I explained why I had made it all up. But how can you put God in the same boat as Mario and Luigi? God created man in his own image. God created the earth and the stars. And all living beings on this planet. He answers our prayers in our time of need we owe God our existence. You know at an early age we have a need to learn and understand the things around us. So hopefully it would be safe to assume that when we are unable to explain the origin of the universe it's much easier to say that God did it. As far as answering prayers. Santa Claus does the same thing. He does it in more of a child friendly way. The big difference is that when you're naughty he does not give you any presents and just gives you a lump of coal. Whereas God depending what religion you believe in may be deciding whether or not to send you to hell. It's a good thing Jesus came along because the Old Testament God may smite you right out if you caught him on a bad day. No. That's not right, because if you pray for forgiveness you will be forgiven. Yes that is basically true if you drop the Old Testament God. Jesus brought forth the concept of forgiveness, he was a very good speaker. So yes you were given a chance to reform yourself. Although, yes. Go, ahead, don't you think after all of this time Satan might be tired of being the bad guy? When the world do you mean? Haven't you ever looked back on the things that you have done in the past, and said, Holy cow what was I thinking? Really think about it, what would happen if the devil decided that he was wrong all along and truly wanted forgiveness? I'll tell you what would happen. The churches would receive less money in the donation plate on Sunday. Some churches need you to fear the devil, to keep people coming into church on Sunday. Really, tell me which would work better on the average adult. Should we tell them to be good and go to church on Sundays or you go to hell? Or should we just tell them to be good and go to church on Sundays otherwise, Santa will not bring them any presents for Christmas? I will say though that religion can have its good points. Really, you have to be kidding me. You sound pretty anti-church to me right now. No really, church does have some positives. We are all born with some type of morals. Church helps you reinforce and build good moral standards. Churches can help teach you how to be good to others. Some parents fail at doing this themselves unfortunately. Churches can help fill in the gaps that the parents missed. So whether they are teaching fact or fiction they do, at times, get the job done. I find it interesting when you look at a child and how they behave. As a parent myself I have found this extremely fascinating to see how children tend to be almost exact copies of their parents. In the way they behave just smaller. I hate to say it but a lot of parents do a bad job of teaching their children the difference between right and wrong. Bad parents make bad kids. 
The problem is that it's not the child's fault. They learn the only way they can by the adults raising them. Well then maybe you should go to church. It sound like it cold and hurt then. Actually I wouldn't mind going to church just for the fact that the people who go there tend to be more responsible. The problem is that church is also like a club, where you will eventually be asked to express your faith in God and asked to recruit others. Well just go along with it and don't tell anyone. I could. But at the same time I would feel like I was trying to convince them that the world was fault. When I knew for myself that it is not, you know in the 16th century the discovery of the microscope must have been something to behold. No one knew that there were tiny microorganisms living in the water we drank. If something tainted the water of a town before this or brought a plague onto the people it was thought that they had done something wrong in the eyes of God. Or that there was a demon among them. Today we know that is not so. What if I told you that science had discovered the spark of life? I would say tell me more. There has been a recent discovery of a new type of particle called a spark quantum data particle. But that is not the half of it. I am also going to tell you that our universe is not unique. Let's say that a sheet of paper represents our universe. Now overlap it with a second sheet of paper this will be the secondary universe. Yes they are that close together but never touch. Now I am also telling you that black holes are not just an inescapable objects that consume all energy and matter bringing them to a singularity. These black holes will at times become so big that they merge both universes and form a white hole in a separate universe. These white holes spew matter into the connecting universe. If a universe is ever destroyed a new one will be born. Now I am going to point out that every action that takes place in your body requires some type of electrical impulse or chemical reaction. So at the time of a Luffy form's conception what do you think gives it life? I suppose it would be a spirit according to most religion. Yes but scientists have discovered this spirit on accident and have named it the spark quantum data particle cluster. Not too many years ago found that we could stimulate the brain of the deceased and recreate a poor image of what was the last thing a person saw at the point of death. Over the years we improved on this technology and on accident we found something unique in the area of the brain where memories are stored. This is where we found the spark quantum data particle cluster. The odds of finding this spot would be like throwing a grain of sand on a beach and later telling someone to go and find it. Anyhow the spark cluster also seemed to be some type of memory storage unit apart from the brain and at the time of death the cluster leaves the brain leaving remnants of the last few seconds of memory. Now under close observation of a live subject we found that the cluster holds a depository of all memory at its host and devils life and some of which do not seem to belong to the host. So what exactly what are these particles? Well it seems that every particle holds a unique collection of memories and outside of the body the cluster of particles form a conscious. Yes the cluster may very well be alive. Also when it separates from the body they exhibit the traits of quantum particles. Where the same particle can be in two places at once. They can also move easily between multiple universes. As I said earlier our universe is not unique. How do these particles begin the spark of life then? It seems that at the time of conception no matter what the life form may be, the spark particle cluster uses this opportunity to put themselves in the driver's seat of this new life form. Now once embedded into a physical form the spark uses the DNA blueprint to build this new body. From this point on until death of this new body the spark is now bound unable to access memory of its previous non-physical state. From here on out the spark will be relying on total reflexes and instincts of the body it now controls. The spark's goal is to mold evolution and to gain knowledge. It seems that the universe is its playground and by which spark quantum data particle clusters gain knowledge and unique life experiences to record and evolve. Some scientists believe that parts of evolution couldn't be created without some form of intelligence and that they needed a creator. The spark particle is the satyr with no god needed to be in charge. You made that up didn't you? Yes, 
I did. Christians want proof and they want it now from the science community. And the possibilities of what happens after death is only limited by our imaginations. But without the Bible I could teach this godless concept and then people would accept it as they do the Bible. Just as my son did with the lightning and thunder. Still it wouldn't mold people as well as the Christian faith. Napoleon once said religion is a good thing. Because it keeps the commoners in line.